Good morning. Uh, this is something that I bought from a museum when I saw Edward Hopper and my forced my son to put it together. But he did it, so that was nice. <laughs> um, so anyways, it's Easter Monday. It's the day after Easter. Jesus is still risen. Hope you got through Easter okay and getting through day by day. Uh, I know with this Staying at home, we can turn to food or alcohol or binge watching, and, and we also got turned to Jesus and the author and finisher of our faith. So this is after Jesus rose from the dead, went up to heaven. So what do we do now? So this is the Acts of the Apostles, Acts nine nineteen. So Peter, I know Paul just was persecuting Christians, killed them. And God stopped him in the road to Damascus, I believe. And uh, he, he became blind and he, he got healed and then um, became baptized. And now he saw, well, eventually changed to Paul, named Paul, and be a great leader in the church. Then he ate some, the early church, as we say. Then he ate some food and was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Acts 9, 19. So there he is eating some food with, and was strengthened. I need to show him being strength, stronger like a superhero. And he spent a few days with the disciples in Damascus. After many days had gone by... The Jews conspired or planned to kill him. Acts 9.23 So here's some Jews that want to kill him. Maybe this is a whip, knife, club, or maybe this is a rope. And there's Saul. But Saul learned of their plan. Dot, dot, dot. There are some words there if you want to look it up in the Bible. The disciples took him by night and let him down through the wall in a large basket. So through the wall, maybe there's a hole here. Um, and they let Jesus down through a basket. I mean, Paul. <laughs> I'm not awake yet. Sorry. Paul. Let Paul down through a basket. Acts 9.26. When he came... Sorry. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a real disciple. He was a real persecutor before he became a Christian. So here's Saul saying hi to everybody. And the disciples said, I'm scared. I don't believe he's a disciple. So maybe we have some enemies in our life that if they changed became a Christian, we'd be like, what? I don't know. But Barnabas, Barnabas means encourager, I believe. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul, on his journey, his trip, had seen the Lord, Acts 9.27. So Barnabas takes Paul under his wing says, Hi, apostles, this is Paul. Listen to what happened to him. The Lord spoke to him in Damascus. He, pre he preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So he's okay. So the apostles say, Okay, we believe you. We're out of our comfort zone, but we'll follow you. Acts 9.28 Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem. Speaking boldly, strongly, in the name of the Lord. So here's Saul moving about freely in Jerusalem. Going this way or that way. Wish we could move freely, but not right now. Spoke boldly and strongly in the name of the Lord. And there should be some people over here. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews. The Helen. Helen Elas is Greek, I believe, Hellenistic Jews, the Greek Jews, but they tried to kill him. 
When the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So there's problems with the Hellenistic Jews. They're gonna, he's going to move again. So Acts is interesting how everybody is on the go, moving around to whatever God has, door God has opened or closed. Just like nowadays. So they talk and debate. I want to debate more. Saul and talk with the Hellenistic Jews and then they lost it. Let's kill him. The Hellenistic Jews say. So the brothers say, oh no, we've got to get Saul out of here. Go down to Caesarea and off to Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. So may we have that. Uh, so the churches in Galilee, Galilee, Judea, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. I guess in the Holy Spirit, when the, there's the Holy Spirit surrounded them. Time of peace and were strengthened. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. So here's, I guess they're in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, Acts 9 31. In the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. So the church took off. May we do that on the internet now. There he found a man named. Aeneas, who was paralyzed, he couldn't walk, and had been bedridden for eight years. Aeneas, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Aeneas, Peter said, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. So there's Peter to Aeneas, Acts 9.34. Get up and roll up your mat. <laughs> I don't know if that means get out of here or what. <laughs> Move on. Do what God wants you to do. Immediately Aeneas got up and was happy in my picture. Those who lived in Lydda and Sharon, all those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. So they saw this going on. They saw Peter, or they saw Aeneas, I'm not sure. They turned to the Lord. They saw what was going on and turned to the Lord. May we turn to the Lord. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, so women can be disciples. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. I always know that from seven brides for seven brothers. There is a Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. May we do that. Tabitha is always doing good and helping the poor in Joppa. So what's going to happen to Tabitha? That's more of a modern name, I guess. About that time, she became sick and died. And her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. So Tabitha became sick and died. And they washed her and put her up in an upstairs room. Very sad. Acts 9.39 When the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him. Urged means, come on, come on, hurry up, let's, let's go. Please come at once. Emphasis emphasize Peter went with them and when he arrived all the widows stood around him crying and showing I need to change that and showed him the robes and other clothing Dorcas had made if I did maybe I did different interpret I don't know why it goes from Dorcas to Tabitha but she may the ladies are crying. Look what Dorcas made when she was with us. So she made different clothes and robes 
And then Peter said, everyone must get out. Acts 9.39 Then Peter sent them all out of the room. He knelt down on his knees and prayed and turning towards her body. So I'm going to kneel down right now. There's my knees. If you're learning English. Peter sent them all out of the room. He knelt down and prayed. God, please be with us. Pray this talk to God. And turning towards her body, he said, Tabitha, get up. Or I don't know how he said it. Tabitha, get up. Or Tabitha, get up. I don't know how he said it. She opened her. I need to write that. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. So Acts 9, 10, Peter says, everybody get out. He says, Tabitha, arise. So she opened her eyes and saw Peter. And I presume she was smiling and excited. She got up, sat up, and he took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Yay, praise the Lord. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. Presented her to them alive. Hey, everyone, she, here she is. She's alive. And everybody's, the believers are all excited. This became known all over Joppa. So the city of Joppa, everybody knew about this. I should write, Tabitha is alive. Tabitha is alive. Tabitha was healed. Tabitha is alive. And many people believed in the Lord because of this miracle. So we, we need to see some miracles, God. I believe all these people believed because of the miracles they saw. So God, please show yourself to us. Peter stayed in Joppa sometime with a tanner named Simon. So I think it's a, a tanner is somebody who works with leather, tans the leather. I think of tan as a, the color brown. So. So Peter is going to stay with Simon. Thanks. Stay with me. And whose house is by the sea. Acts 10, 6. Whose house is by the sea. I don't know which sea. Acts 10. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment or Army. So in Caesarea, there was a man named, a, a soldier named S Cornelius. He was devout and God-fearing. He had a devout and God-fearing family. He and all his family, let's say this is him, Cornelius. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. And here's Cornelius, the soldier from Italy. This is the boot of Italy. God be with Italy. Cornelius in the Italian regiment, army. Ciao. Hello. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. May we do this. Give freely, generous, with an open hand. He gave gener He was very fruitful or giving. He gave generously to those in need. Here you go. Here's some food, some bread, money. That's Cornelius giving to those in need. And he prayed regularly to God. Dear God, please help us at this time. And thank you for your many blessings. Here's three o'clock. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision, a dream, or he saw something. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius, Cornelius stared at him in fear. So he's looking at him. He stared, looked at him, watched him at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. 
The angel answered, An angel is a messenger of God. Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering, giving before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. So just like uh, the other vision, they sent. who did he send to go and get Paul? This guy's, this angel is saying, go and get Peter. So your prayers and gifts to the poor have been a memorial offering to the Lord. They've been heard and like incense, like a good smell. And the angel tells him, go to, so Cornelius, I think, tells his workers to bring back Simon and Joppa. Go to bring Simon Peter from Simon the Tanner's home next to the water. Next to the sea. So here's my second drawing because I read the Bible twice. Cornelius of the Italian regiment, a devout one, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, everybody in his house feared God, gave alms money to the poor, alms to the poor, alms to the poor, prayed to God always, amen, please be with us. And the angel saw him at 9 o'clock, or was it 3 o'clock? Cornelius, send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. First name, he is lodging with, living with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what to do. So the angel departed. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him and having related everything to them, sent them to Joppa. So the servants and a devout, holy, faithful soldier uh, were sent to Joppa to get Peter. So I think we'll read about... Peter had a vision as well, which is really important. Acts 10, 9. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, sorry if I'm not filming this very well, Peter went up on the roof to pray. So about noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, so here's the two servants and soldier going to Joppa. I think it was two servants. Peter became hungry. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, being cooked, he fell into a trance or a vision or like hypnosis. You can't see. Hello, hello. Peter is in a trance. And the food is being prepared. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet, a large cloth, here's my cloth down here, sheet, being led down to earth by its four corners. One, two, three, four. And we have four corners of the paper. One, two, three, four corners. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being led down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of animal, four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. So Peter is praying on the roof. He falls into a trance or a vision or a dream. And a voice tells him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. And he says, Surely not, Lord. Jewish people are not supposed to eat pigs, uh, I guess four-footed animals, reptiles, snakes, 
um, and certain birds. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Surely not, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. I've never eaten anything dirty. He must be Jewish and not allowed to eat different foods that are unhealthy and holy, I guess you'd call it. Or not holy, but sacred. Sacred not to eat. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. So in Acts 10, God is making, talks about God making the food clean to eat. This happened three times, and immediately, suddenly, the sheet was taken back to heaven. So three times, the, the voice talked to him and said, eat it, eat it, eat it. And immediately, the sheet with the animals was taken back to heaven. So I think that's shrimp or lobster, crab, maybe clams, oysters, turtles, all the things that the Jewish people, according to law, are not supposed to eat. The vision was taken back to heaven. Acts 10, 19. Is this in focus? Sorry, folks. I hope it's in focus okay. Acts 10, 19. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, what he saw, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. So Peter was still thinking about the vision. What is going on? And at that time, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. Simon Peter staying here? And they called out. They called asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. Is Simon staying there? Calling out, hey, real loud voice, I'm sure. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are still are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. So the vision, the spirit said to him, there's three men down there looking for you. Don't hesitate to go with them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're, you're looking for. Why have you come? So Peter goes down to talk to them. I'm Pe Peter. I'm Simon. Why are you looking for me? Why have you come? The men replied or answered, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. So that's what the three, the centurion and the two servants say to him. Cornelius uh, wants you to come so you can teach them. <clears throat> 